that was an interesting six months for us as a team. Um, I think the industry is still in that um, segment uh, that that's open and then we close and then schools are delayed and um, and then there's art lockdown happening again. So it's one of the sectors that's really get affected um, quite heavily um, the last 18 months. So um, for us, we've been spared a bit by having a different calendar and timetable for this year. So we sort of missed the waves luckily in January as well as in June, where we've been able to, with our timetable, to have schools open and just lost a bit of time in the beginning of the year as well now as in June. So operationally, it was an interesting time for us. Um, but financially, the, if you look at the good, the, the pluses that, that happened is the growth in our learner numbers. And it's not only just in a certain model, all over from our select schools to our academies um, and even our DGEDs, all of those schools have shown good um, learner growth, um, which is uh, which for us um, at the beginning of the year, um, you can say you expected growth, but uh, or you were hoping for growth, but you didn't expect seven, eight, nine percent. So if you if you take um, us where we ended up at the end of September last year within the fifty nine thousand region, where we uh, lost heavily throughout lockdown predominantly in our preschools. I think that growth to where we are today, um, uh, it's, I think, for us as a company, a good achievement. In this environment where there's so much uncertainty, especially when it comes to how long, um, you know, the COVID outbreak would last for, especially with the spread of the Delta variant, what have you learned about the, um, you know, parent profile of your Puro pupils? If you if you analyze if you look at your your segment, remember we service learners from babies up to eighteen years old. Um, I, I I you know our view of of the industry and 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 parents. Um, if you look at the market, uh, by preschool to primary school age six and seven, um, grade six and seven, um, parents need their child to get education from a quality in institution where they know they can leave them at safe protocols are followed, where a child not only just get their lessons, but they get uh, life skills, uh, which is which you require um, within a team and a community. So um, as we see is that parents can't wait for schools to open up. There can be other reasons as well. Let's not go there. But um, parents can't wait for schools to open, specifically in the primary school, um, and for their children to get quality education there. The high school, we believe, um, learners there, there's a lot of more creativity need to be applied by the institutions. You can't just go back to pre-COVID um, norms um, and way of educating. And for there, the, the remarkable change that we've seen over the last 18 months is we've been working hard on our hybrid teaching and, uh, you know, digital teaching in our classrooms with throughout our academic department, our IT department, training of teachers, etc. And then when COVID happened, it actually enhanced in um, us to, to utilize these platforms a lot quicker. So what we are doing currently with our high school learners are giving them choice. So we want to get to a point where you do subject choices and your school aren't offering that subject that we can off offer you that subject at your school, but obviously doing it digital. So we started that this year and it um, they took up from the beginning of the year, the take up from the beginning of the year up till now. It's, it's actually amazing how many learners are daily signing up um, and changing su subjects that they like and love. So we obviously tested it, um, do, we do busy with a pilot and if it works, we will, not if, when it works, we will roll it out quicker. Right. I'm curious, in terms of the financial pressures uh, parents are experiencing, uh, especially those who take their the, uh, young ones uh, to Kuro, what are you seeing from a um, financial pressure point of view, given the fact that we're a year and a half into the pandemic? It's obviously, it was uh, to say that you didn't ex um, experience any losses of parents, um, maybe you don't, then don't live in, in, in the world. Um, we sadly had to, we saw um, about three and a half thousand to four thousand learners that left us in the last 18 months due to purely financial pressure. 
Um, and if you analyze it, those are in sectors that um, it's not stable and the economy hasn't um, opened up in, in those segments yet. So we felt it um, and parents are there, um, you know, and those segments are under pressure. But I must say for the current debt clientele we've got currently active in our, in our schools, the, the payment profile of their, those learners are, are quite good. Um, it seems like the payment profile are back to pre-COVID uh, payments and even better. So that gives me hope that hopefully the learners currently within our system can roll over into the next years. And hopefully the economy will open. We will get some form of normality back. Um, other segments will open up again and um, we, we can get um, some growth coming back and that will hopefully spill over to Kira. In a hypothetical situation, what does that form of normality look like, especially now that um, you know, your teachers and your pupils are getting into the swing of things when it comes to that hybrid learning? Is that something that you foresee going forward in the next two to three years, or do you think traditional learning might come back at some point? I, I, I just at this stage for our learners, my biggest wish for them is to, just to go back and have some sort of fun, <laughs> um, have some sport, have some culture activities, have human trick ball, um, you know, those type of things for a teenager. You, if you miss it in your grade 12 um, year, my goal was my daughter was in grade 12 last year and she missed it. Um, you know, it's part of your life that's just not there, you know, it's gone. 